A new government report estimates a record number of Americans are experiencing homelessness. Starting in 2007, the Department of Housing and Urban Development sent volunteers out on a single night each January to count all the people they could find who didn't have shelter. Experts caution that this is not a census and it's likely an undercount because it's hard to find everyone experiencing homelessness on a single night. This year, they counted more than 650,000. That's a 12% increase over the last year, the biggest one-year jump on record, and more than four times greater than any previous increase. In the past, a single category drove the increase, but this year, all categories went up. Individuals, families, unaccompanied children, and so on. Ann Oliva is the CEO of the National Alliance to End Homelessness. Ann, what do you make of those numbers, of that big jump? Thank you, first, for having me on your show today. This is such an important topic, and we need to make sure that folks are aware of what's happening. You know, we are certainly concerned about these numbers. This is the highest number, as you mentioned, since 2007, and it's across all categories. So what that means to us is that this is a systemic problem, and it needs systemic solutions. So explain that, a systemic problem, what needs to be changed or what needs to be fixed? So what this means is that we have an affordable housing crisis. What the data tells us and what the evidence tells us is that when housing becomes less affordable for people, homelessness increases. So seeing a 12% jump year over year really should be a wake up call to many folks, including our partners in the federal government, that we need to make investments in affordable housing and services because we know that's what ends homelessness. Why do you think it went up so much? I mean, obviously you say it's a, it's a, it's a housing problem. Did the inventory of housing shrink or what happened? Well, we've been tracking data over the last year. And while we were deeply disappointed in this increase in 2023, I can't say that we were surprised. And that's because uh, we have seen sort of a perfect storm of issues coming up over the last couple of years. So for example, rents are skyrocketing all over the country and people's wages aren't keeping up with the amount of rent that they have to pay. So they're paying more and more of their income towards rent. We saw the end of the COVID era protections, the funding that was available for families and individuals across the country and the end of the eviction moratorium. At the same time, we are seeing this rise in unsheltered in unsheltered homelessness. So we have a number of things that, that we need to address structurally in this country. Are there disparities in terms of who is likely to be homeless? Yeah, thank you for asking that question. It is an important one. There are disparities. Historically marginalized people are disproportionately impacted by homelessness and housing instability. What I mean by that is people of color, people with disabilities, LGBTQ people are all disproportionately impacted by homelessness and housing instability. So they're more likely to be homeless than others in our country. You mentioned the COVID era programs that were helping. The, the number of homeless was increasing from 2016 until 2020, and then it didn't rise between 2020 and 2022 because of those programs. Is there a lesson in that? There's absolutely a lesson in the COVID era protections. Uh, first, they were funded at a scale that's much closer to the problem. So for example, HUD's homeless programs are funded at a little bit more than $3 billion per year. And the COVID emergency rental assistance program was funded at $50 billion per year. So you can see the scale was much greater. They were also quite a bit more flexible than our regular are regularly funded programs. So as those pandemic era protections and resources started to dwindle, again, it is not surprising that we are seeing an increase in homelessness and at the same time that we're seeing those skyrocketing rents. President Biden campaigned on ending homelessness. Is he doing enough or is the administration doing enough? Well, thank you for asking that. I don't think that anybody's doing enough at the federal, state, or local level. When we see a 12% increase over the course of one year, I think it should be a call to action for all of us who are concerned about people who are living unsheltered across this country and people and families who are living in shelters. 
So there is definitely more that we can do in terms of resources that are made available for this problem and really funding affordable housing at the scale that it needs to be funded. Because you're trying to expand affordable housing, does this need to involve the private sector as well? So the best way to expand housing that is affordable to people at the lowest incomes, that's usually somewhere between zero and 30% of the area median income, is really to ensure that the government uh, is subsidizing rents and providing subsidies to, uh, to folks who can do the development that's needed. Uh, affordable housing is really hard to do in the private sector, uh, given how expensive it can be, in some markets especially. Anna Oliva, CEO of the National Alliance to End Homelessness. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. For more of our reporting on chronic homelessness in America and why the number of those without shelter continues to go up, visit our website, pbs.org newshour.